So much rests on this game for them. Croatia, happy to be in the last 16. They only started playing internationals back in, in 1994. They were delighted to make progress to the second phase. But expectation high in the Netherlands. And the Dutch disappointed in their opening game, suffering a 3-1 defeat against Portugal. Also in this group, Spain, beaten finalists four years ago and runners-up in Europe last year. There's a Croatian squad. Four of them play part-time in Italy. Two of them are in the United States. Here is the Croatian lineup. Micho Martic is uh, the skipper. Look out for Gradovic. Same starting five as yesterday, but are beaten by Spain. Final handshakes from the Dutch. Big, big game for them this evening. Without Len Zalek, he won't take any further part in the competition, having uh, damaged knee ligaments. Letting has been their real force. And Lea Tima has managed over 100 appearances for his country. He also acted as goalkeeper in the closing stages against Portugal when the Dutch were so desperate to get a goal. Martin Kuncic, who's been in charge of the Croatian national squad for six years. An impressive record as coach, 46 internationals, 32 wins, just nine defeats. Now when Laura 
experienced in futsal terms than Nico Spry, the Dutch coach. He's assisted now by Vic Hemmels, who was voted the best player at Futsal 89. Here we are at Futsal 2000, the fourth FIFA World Championship. And this is a huge game for the Dutch. Started very impressively. They, they were up against it against Egypt, absorbed a lot of pressure, but were clinical with their finishing. They, they led 4-0, then they went on to win 5-3. They beat Uruguay 3-1, they beat Thailand 6-1. But then it all came horribly and stuck for them against Portugal, a game which they lost 3-1. So we're all set. Group F, Croatia it is in the red and white Czech shirts and white shorts against the Netherlands in the familiar orange and black. I think both these sides will be feeling a little down after yesterday, but as you mentioned, Croatia really with nothing to lose. And certainly they were up against more formidable opposition than the Netherlands were. 5-0 against Spain. Big score line. And eventually we're underway then with Croatia here attacking from left to right. It's their skipper on the ball very quickly, Mito Martic. Now Goran Eklik. Vital game this. It's not going to be easy for the Dutch even if they if they win this one because next of course they play play Spain, who were very impressive against Croatia. Two games in two days for these teams, it hasn't been easy for them. And a tough programme here at El Domo today. All the eight teams in the second phase have had a game. We've seen impressive performances already from the Russians, who were trailing to Argentina, but then went on to win 7-1. The Argentinians paying the price for a lot of indiscipline. We then had an impressive show from Brazil, 12-4 winners over Egypt. Egypt, not a bad side. Scoreline really not a reflection of, of their ability. Langenhausen has won the first corner for the Netherlands. He scored in that game against Portugal, his first goal in the tournament. And it's the skipper, Leotimo across to take the corner. Lazy backlift there by Henny Letting. Letting who has managed six goals in the championships for the Netherlands. Normally a Defensive player for them, a very robust character who uh, has made his presence felt. You mentioned the draw, I think, although this, of course, is a very crucial game, both sides desperately need the points here, but it's possibly better, looking better for Croatia than the Netherlands, simply because, as you mentioned, the Netherlands' last game is against Spain, when Spain would certainly be favoured to take the points there. Croatia played Portugal. And you never know, they may be able to win that one yet. Quite the interception there by Martin Howes, who's, who's probably a front player for the Dutch, had to get back quickly there to deal with the pass intended for Mitro Matic. of concentration in defence, cleverly done as well by the skipper there, Micho Martic, and a deft downward header. Tom Sear, one of the best goalkeepers in the competition, had absolutely no chance. It was a wonderful start by Croatia, and I think they caught the Dutch by surprise, playing the corner the way they did, and the header coming in from Tomicic. Tomicic not in the starting five, but he's got the opening goal. What a start for Croatia. Less than two minutes on the clock. Nikola Tomitec has given Croatia the lead. I didn't think the Netherlands handled the pressure all that well yesterday when they were trailing Portugal. They got a little flustered. And it will be interesting to see, conceding a goal in the second minute, what they can do against Croatia here. They need to hold their composure. To inject a little bit of urgency there was the skipper, Leotima. Leotima now 34, most count player in Dutch football, indoors or outdoors, men or women. Started the championships with his 100th cap. 
gets the goal, which has given Croatia the lead, though. There's a hopeful header, really, from the player coming in there, Tomatech. And he's got another opportunity to, to try and get something going here for Croatia. Forward by Eklic towards Grudovic. Now the skipper, Martic. Lea Tima with a header to safety for the Netherlands. Eklic. Grudovic just allowing the ball to, to roll under the sole of his shoe. Opening few minutes have lacked the pace or the passion of the first two games we've seen in El Domo here today. The Russians were very impressive, particularly in the second half against Argentina. The Brazilians impressive throughout against Egypt. Those two games in Group E, now we're into Group F. Leatina. Letting has made a move for him. And Letting here with another chance, that's a penalty. Hacked down there by Grudovic. See, yellow card as well for Grudovic. Despite the protest there of the skipper, Micha Marcic. And the Dutch here with an opportunity to equalise very early on. Won't be from the 10 meter mark, this it'll be from the edge of the D. But what must be going through his mind, the Dutch coach? It's Langenhausen to step forward. Big, big moment this for Pascal Langenhausen. Marshall has missed several times from the 10 meter line. What can Langenhausen do from the edge of the D? He hammers the ball in beyond Putigan. The Dutch are level. Second goal in the championships for Pascal Langenhausen. Well struck penalty. So two goals inside the first four minutes. But we thought there might have been a handball there. That wasn't given. But that was the trip by Gradovic on Letting. And that was a well struck penalty by Langenhausen. It's back to 1-1. One, one. Goalkeeper was committed, he was already diving away to his right, and now the Netherlands are level. It's 1-1 one, one here in Group F. Here come Croatia. Delpont did well to get to the byline. Sears handling wasn't brilliant for once. Croatia making a block substitution. Four new players out there. Here come Holland. Lentink has uh, just gone to ground. Players allowed to continue. May have been a slip, but the look suggests that he felt that he was uh, given a clip on the way through there. Dutch, very physical. Trying to boss the game against uh, Portugal. Yellow card to Grudovic. Scooped to safety there by Chuliak as the Croatian goal was put under a bit of pressure. Second yellow card in the second phase for Gradovic. He now faces suspension. Two yellow cards will rule him out from one fixture. Presumably that will be the next fixture. Slate was wiped clean after the end of the first phase. Trip there by Marshall on Grichia. Easy tempo. Dutch well organized in defense. Player system of 1 2 2 can change that around a little bit. They've uh, been known to play Langenhausen as a target man up front, but the Dutch here defending in even greater numbers. And that was a foul by Grieche. Lino was who was bundled to the ground. 
Don't forget in futsal, after six fouls, the offending team concede a penalty from the 10-metre mark. Croatia have committed two fouls, the Netherlands just one. And it's the Netherlands on the attack here with Marshall. Here's Letting. Dutch determined to play Letting. They've had their problems with injury. You can see that, that Letting's got his uh, left knee heavily strapped. He's, uh, he's been patched up after every game. And then without Glenn Zalek, who is arguably their most creative player, he's out for the rest of the tournament. Nicely worked by the Dutch. Marshall just wide with the shot. Zalek watching this game. On the crutches, he's damaging the ligaments, and that could keep him out of uh, futsal for another seven or eight months. Injury picked up in the opening game against Egypt. The Dutch have settled very well after conceding that first goal in the second minute to Tomicic. They were taken by surprise then, and I mentioned that it would be interesting to see how they recovered from that, and I think they did need a quick reply. Now they've got that, and they do seem to be playing with some confidence, certainly back with their composure. Del Pont has been a, a very good player throughout the championship for Croatia. The Netherlands starting with more possession in the first seven minutes. Tom Sear, who's been one of the outstanding goalkeepers in the tournament. The Dutch goalkeeper excelled against both Egypt and Uruguay. Had a quiet night against Thailand. Then which the Dutch won 6-1. The Dutch here have another corner. Lucas by the coach is a great theorist about the game of futsal. He felt that back in 96, the Dutch paid the price for having too many players with a bit too much flair. Again, a question of um, galvanising the team and trying to, to get them playing as a unit. Here come Croatia again with Martic. Rudovic, Rudovic continuing a forward run. Eklich on the ball. Rudovic. Grika just ahead of him. Nice work there by Tomitic. That yellow card picked up by Grudovic just before he took a break makes this match even more important for Croatia. I mentioned they will be playing Portugal in their next game, but Grudovic is such an important player, it seems as if he will be missing from that encounter. So. Well, perhaps they could have afforded to drop the points here. Without Grudovic against Portugal, it will make things very tough. So, they have him now. They want to make the most of it against the Dutch side. Grudovic, one of the Croatian players who, who plays in Italy semi-professionally. Oh, wonderfully done there by Latin. Unconventional save by Budigan, but he's been able to scoop the ball forward, and there's a, a chance for a counter-attack here by Croatia. A sliding challenge by Langenhausen. We've mentioned before that you're not allowed to, to slide in to take the ball away. The tackle has to be a clean one. See if we're only too aware that players can get hurt if uh, the defender slides in to get the ball away. It's a very hard and unforgiving surface that they're playing on. Wooden surface for Futsal. Wall did its job and... There, there was an appeal from the skipper, Michio Martic, suggesting that there might have been a trip. Tommy Tetsch, who's uh, scored the goal for Croatia already. There, he was denied the opportunity. You can see him there to the, the left of the frame, and yes, there was a challenge from behind there by Anthony Merlon. I think the crowd is just waiting for something to really happen in this match. One all. It has been 
a careful start. Mind you, these sides play a very similar style of futsal. They both like to hold on to the ball for quite some time. This game certainly hasn't had any of the flair which we saw in the opening two matches. Maybe the skipper here. The player team, we can add some inspiration, but there's a chance here for the Croatian skipper. Micha marches to get well forward. Good goalkeeping by Sear. Sear got up very sharply there to, to provide as big a block as possible as uh, Martic came in. Goals in futsal are what might be regarded as European handball goals. They're two metres high. Great skills there by Tomadec. Wonderful, wonderful effort that by Tomadec, who's really up for this, having scored for Croatia, giving Croatia the lead. Tomatech missed the opening game for Croatia. He was he was flying in from the United States. He plays there with the Detroit Rockets. And he'll be joined there by one of his Croatian teammates when the tournament is over. Sinisa Alibec is uh, on his way to join Detroit as well. I think it's taken Tomicic a little while to find his feet in, these to in this tournament. But it looks like he's here to play today with that opening goal and uh, setting up almost for Gradovic, his second one a moment ago. Wild effort by Martic. He scored more goals for Croatia than Martic. He, he became the record goal scorer in the opening game, a 4 defeat by Russia. It wasn't a bad performance that by Croatia because they trailed 3-0 and they pulled it back to 3-2. Showed great fight and great determination to, to make a game of it. Dutch players, all amateurs, although two of them have, have played professionally, 11 aside in the, the Dutch Premier League. Lucy Taller is one, the other one is Henny Letting, and he reached 32, he was with Utrecht. Taller was with AZ Alpma. This was bundled into touch by Tomatec. Letting confronted here by Rudovic. Eklic now to sweep up in defence for Croatia. Rudovic, there's a player out wide here, there's a great chance for a second for Croatia. Romantic has had a couple of chances, but he's He's not maybe had the sharpness which Croatia are looking for. Tell him with the opportunity to get out to make the block. But they've squeezed in a second goal. Gradovic has got it. More sloppy defending by the Dutch. Twice now they've been caught out by quickly taken kick-ins. The Dutch there anticipating the ball being played along the ground. But it's the little scoop up which has been their undoing not once but twice now. Nicely placed by Grudovic. He was unsuccessful the first time. Ball coming back to him off, off Tala. It's Croatia lead 2 1. And we have our first timeout of the first period. And both the Croatian goals have come from corners, sent in there by Matic. So they've done very well in that regard. The first. A header from Tomacic, and then that goal scored by Gradovic. And as I mentioned, two yellow cards now for Gradovic means that he will be missing from the next game, the crucial game against Portugal. Four goals, it indicates what an important member of the team he is. So they really have to make hay while the sun shines, so to speak, and with him in the side, desperately trying to get the points against the Netherlands. They will miss him against Portugal. He scored four goals in this tournament. He managed nine in qualifying. He was Croatia's top goal scorer in that uh, qualifying series. And here they come again. Solid defending there by Tala. It's a push as well by Tomidic. Play a team now. Here's Tala. 
foul count now reads 3-3, Croatia 3, the Netherlands 3. When they get to 6, they'll have a penalty from the 10-metre mark. Matting dispossessed. Here come Croatia once more. Brudovic and Tomicach very impressive in this opening half. Peels out from the Croatians, he found out that uh, Grudovic was fouled at the edge of the deep. And the Dutch have hit them quickly on the break and have now won the corner. Into the second half of the first half. They have Tima here to take the corner for the Netherlands. Tala is on the edge of the D and he was sweeping in there to try and make the most of the, the crossing from Letting. Letting far more comfortable on his left foot. Then he had to uh, readjust and, and try and get a shot in right footed. No trouble at all for Rashida Putigan, the Croatian goalkeeper. Smartly done by Letting. Good save. Goalkeeper advancing. Very aggressive goalkeeping that by Putigan. Solid performer at the back for Croatia. Tomicic. Now Del Pont. Dricek. Well, last effort from uh, Netting. It's a difficult angle for him. Goalkeeper that had to make the save. conservative approach once again they find themselves behind and knowing full well they have Spain to come in their last game and they would also know so well with six players back from 96 how disappointing they were in the second phase then really out to make amends here as we saw that second goal once again Radovic it was scoring for the fourth time Take it. Tima is in the D together with Tala. Could be inviting this for Letting. I suspect the Marshall will square it to Letting. He decides to have a goal for goal himself. Dutch there with Tala and Leia Tima inside the D. Sometimes it's difficult for the team to create anything from set pieces because the opposition have the chance to get so many bodies back to to provide defensive cover. It's one area of the game, no doubt the FIFA technical committee will be looking at. They've a party of observers here, including Teco, who was the Brazilian coach who, who has led Brazilia, Brazil to three successes. I'd say even Teco, despite the fact that under his leadership, Brazil lost only two matches in 11 years, I would suggest that he was uh, as impressed as the rest of us with their trouncing early in the day of Egypt 12-4. How good is that? Exceptional performance by Brazil. Showing one or two signs of vulnerability in defence. Although it has to be said that they gave one goal to Egypt because their first choice goalkeeper had been sent off. And in futsal, if the team is reduced to four men because of a dismissal, they have to wait until the goal is scored or wait for two minutes before they can replace it. So it's decided they were better off conceding a goal and getting their fifth man on. All the rules of futsal designed to keep the game flowing. Great skill there by uh, Langenhausen just trying to work the ball through to, to Charden. Dutch have made a number of changes. Here's Tala. Langenhausen with the shot that was well charged down there by Dervis Shagic. Frankfurt on the ball now for the Netherlands. To Chard. Langenhausen just trying to provide the buffer, just trying to, to release Frankfurt. Able to hold off the defender who was very tight to his back. It's going to 
be hard enough for either of these teams to make it through to the semi-finals. In any case, with the form of Portugal that they showed yesterday, but whichever team does go through out of Portugal and Croatia and the Netherlands, in all likelihood, they're going to run into Brazil in the semi-finals, and that is a daunting prospect. Quite a distance ahead to speculate, but certainly Brazil looking like they would be the top team going through from Group E. And Spain, in all likelihood, the top team from Group F. So, tough semi-final coming up. We have the Dutch are trying to raise the tempo. Chad. And just let the ball slip away from him. He was uh, well marked there by Tomislav Gritscher. He's a hefty defender. And just got a bit of a nudge. Problems here for Croatia. They're over there on the, the far side who, who tumbled onto the onto the pitch. It's actually uh, Nikola Tomicic, the, the scorer of the first goal, who without anybody being anywhere near him, took a, took a tumble. You, may have, you can see there that the, uh, the, the pitch is very, very wet. I'm surprised the officials haven't uh, called for some mopping up there because uh, Tomatec really did go flying. No one near him. We can see it from this angle, and you can see it towards the top of the screen there. Our cameras can pick it up as well, but perhaps from ground level, the official was unable to see it. But I'm sure Tomatec felt it. Able to work the ball through to Pascal Langenhausen. Langenhausen got the equaliser from the penalty spot for the Netherlands. Komadec having given Croatia the lead. Radovic has restored the lead. 2 1 Croatia in front. Netting. Strong play by Radovic. Netting across to make the block. And here Croatia have the free kick. Well, it was shoulder to shoulder. Both of them are, are very powerful players. That was a powerful shot from Eklic, which has spun away off here for a corner to Croatia. It's well, been it a good first half this for Croatia. Sorry, Tony, I was going to say they've scored twice from corners, so I was watching that one with much anticipation. They have their set plays working well. And at the moment, they lead it 2-1. Incidentally, both sides up to four fouls. There's just over three minutes remaining, so they may well be safe in this first half. Let it. Able to find Marshall. Nice work by Nikola Tomitec, who's had a good first half and seems none the worse for that nasty tumble. A chance now for the Ducks. Let it. Great recovery there by Grudovic. Nicely played again by Tomatec. He's really enjoying the, uh, the opportunity to play against the Dutch. Tomatec now 27. Flew here to Guatemala after the opening game. Tomatec playing in the United States. Fourth game I've seen Tomicic play, four out of five, and it is certainly the most impressive he's been so far. Rich on the attack here with Merlino, they've won the corner. Merlino just rolling the ball around his right foot, tempting Martic to make the challenge. Marshall with a shot. Second chance for Marshall. More strong play there by Grudovic. But it's the Netherlands that have an indirect free kick. Let him. Good save that by. Boshida Butigan. Martic. Now the skipper, Micho Martic. And that was a hefty challenge there by Marshall. Rodovic is the player down. 
He's uh, feeling his, his right ankle. Fifth foul now. Grudovic actually injured his ankle in the last um, first round match against Costa Rica. He twisted it quite badly. And I was surprised that he was able to return to the pitch when he did in that match, but clearly he's a little susceptible there as he takes it once again. So that's bad luck for Grudovic. The good luck, I suppose, if you can look at it this way, is that he's going to have a match to recover. With two yellow cards. Grudovic has gone off for further attention. Croatia have made a substitution. Chulyak has come on. That's an awful start that for Chulyak. Ball came straight to him and he still allowed it to roll out of play. Here's Marshall. Great turn by Marshall. First time shot from Marshall, who's made a more than useful contribution for the Netherlands during these championships. Less sure footed when he was in the position to score from the 10 meter mark he's actually missed three 10 meter penalties although he has got one goal for the Netherlands the two niggly little uh, challenges Martic there at 36 the oldest member of this Croatian side just getting his uh, this little balk there from Molino and the fifth foul means that this is now a penalty from the 10-metre mark. A necessary challenge, really, by Molino. And it's given Grudovic the chance to increase the lead for Croatia. Grudovic against Sia. It's 3-1 now to Croatia. They're really flying. Two now for Grudovic. Three for Croatia. And it looks very much as though the Netherlands, who disappointed four years ago, are once more going to go out of these championships. Well struck uh, penalty from the 10 metre mark, and Sear down and helpless to keep that one out. Great performance this by Croatia. The goal very handy just before half time, coming about a minute out from half time, just over a minute. And uh, now problems at the other end, so an opportunity for the Netherlands. Their fifth foul, Gradovic. They look at that five goals, two of them today. And now, this with the fifth foul provides a free kick. Letting go with the free kick, two in the defensive wall. Molino trying to step across in front of the goalkeeper, but again, and it's Marshall who's fired the shot over the top. Inside the final minute of the first half. Tala with the kick in. Here's Molino, who's been prominent throughout this first half. Didn't get many opportunities in the first two games that the Dutch played in these championships. Tala on the ball. Now Marshall, closely watched by Eklich. Just tried to wriggle free and he was unsuccessful but here come Croatia again vital interception by Tala great work again by Tomicic and there's letting pushes the ball through Tala unable to take advantage into the final minute of the first half and now it's Croatia's turn to call for a timeout Coach there, Martin Berncic, just perhaps feeling that the Dutch were starting to increase the tempo slightly. That was the earlier break by Nikola Tomicic. Great skill by Tomicic, forceful as he came forward. It's been a good first half for Croatia. Two goals for Gradovic, another for Niko Tomicic. After Pascal Langenhausen had equalised that. Tomatech effort to make it 1 1. The Croatians have looked stronger. Only 22 seconds remaining before half time. And Croatia with the ball, leading 3 1. Obviously, 
coach Brunchich asking for one last effort. Nothing to that declare. In futsal, the ball can be played above head height. Rudovic. Now Eklic. No chances now by Croatia. The first half comes to a close. An excellent first half for Croatia. The coach will be delighted by the commitment shown by his players. They've grown in confidence and stature as the games have come along. Now they've taken on one of the best in Europe. They've taken on the Netherlands and they've given the Dutch coach Nico Spry plenty to think about here at half time because in El Domo, in Group F, at half time it's Croatia 3, the Netherlands 1. Very good performance by Croatia. Taking the lead in just the second minute. Netherlands getting back to one all, but then Gradovic, after receiving a yellow card, two late goals, very significant, and 16 attempts on goal each, 14 shots on target to 12, so both teams have been on target, two corners, both times have scored, and possession with the Netherlands. Croatia the leaders over with 3-1.体制の考え方、太さの特徴を生かすスピーディーさを強調しよう。それからフェアプレーを確保しよう。これについてはですね、やはり三つぐらいなポイントがあるのかと思います。で、その一つはまずハーフウェイラインを超えてゴールキーパ
交代できるのはフィールドプレーヤーだけだったんですねでこれがゴールキーパーも含められるということになりましたフットサルでは4秒ルールというものが適用されて何でもこう早く早く観客や選手を飽きさせないような速いプレーが求められてますねでゴールキーパーの交代についてもまあボールがインプレー中にやっていいよと。いうことがあると思います。で、これはですね、えー、フィールドプレイヤーがゴールキーパーのユニフォームを着て、えー、ピッチに立って五人でプレーをする。もちろんそのゴールキーパーとしての資質が、まあ能力というものが高くないんで、えー、リスクではあると思うんですけども、逆に言うと攻撃的になると、こういうことがこういうプレーができるようになったということがあると思います。もう一つ、まあ、三つ目となると思いますけれどもこれまで、えー、反則を1チーム6つー重ねると第 2PK ペナルティーマークからあー壁がないゴールキーパーと1対1のフリーキックが与えられました。でこの距離がこれまではゴールラインから1 2ルのところでした。しかしかながらこのこの今年の改正でゴールラインから10メートルのところになりました。まあ、10メートルというとやはり、えー、そこから壁がなくてゴールキーパーと一対一であればあ非常に得点のチャンスが生まれると思います。これは得点のチャンスを増やすということでもあるんですけれども、やはり反則をより少なくしようと。えーまあ、フットサルというのはサッカーの,そのエッセンスをあのようなゲームです、えー、反則をなるべく少なくしてフェアプレーに徹して、えー、行ってくださいと,というようなところなのかと思います。日本フットサル連盟はですね、えー、本年今まで二十数年の歴史の中で初めて開催再編という形を取ってもらい取らせてていただきまして、えー、全国の地域に、えー、の代表の理事を入れていただいてそれで各地域にまで、えー、全国展開ができるようにという組織を開演しましたその中で日本サル連盟がこれからやらなきゃいけないこととかということが自然と出てきたわけですけどその中でやっぱり一番大事なことはリーグ戦を各地域でやっていただこうということに、えー決めましてですね各地域にできるだけ早い時期にリーグ戦を展開していただいてそれでそのートータルの中でその上には日本を代表するリーグが将来的にできればというのが目標にですね、えー、競技性の一つはそれがありますそれからもう一つは、えー、普及ということではあのサッカーのファミリーがたくさん増えるように、えー、我々の中で、えー、いつでもどこでも誰でもという。理念のもとにですね、多くの方がサッカーを愛し、それでフットサルの愛好者になっていただいてですね、サッカーファミリーを拡大していくというのがまあ一つの狙いであります。Ready for a start, OK, t h o Welcome back to El Domo. Tony Joe's here with Mike McCann. Group F, half term, it's Croatia 3, the Netherlands 1. Croatia scoring twice after Langenhausen had equalized from the penalty spot for the Netherlands. Niko Tomatec, who played well during the first half, had given Croatia the lead. Gradovic with two goals, giving Croatia the advantage. And a key game this in Group F. Because the side who loses know that they won't be able to make any further progress. So the Dutch here with a lot of work to do in the second half. Don't forget in futsal, two 20 minute halves, the clock is stopped whenever the ball is out of play. It's designed to be fast and furious. And the Dutch here with plenty to do. You haven't seen much of the Dutch in these championships, Mike, but your impressions of the first half? Well, it's a little disappointing as far as the Netherlands are concerned. They just seem to be playing without confidence at the moment, and、uh, it really is their moment of reckoning. 
because although you say the loser is out, I, as I mentioned in the first half, should Croatia lose and then beat Portugal, there is still some sort of chance they could go through. You could have three teams all on level points and it gets back to uh, goal difference. But, uh, gee, I don't fancy the Netherlands' chances of um, coming back from defeat here because they play Spain. I wouldn't be going into that match with any confidence, any expectation of taking the points against the Spaniards. This is really the aperitif as well in Group F because the next game on, the two teams who both won their opening fixture, it's Spain, the runners-up four years ago, runners-up in the European Championships against Portugal, who emerged as a force in this uh, competition. And a good recovery there by Seer. He needed help, though, from uh, Langenhausen. Seer, impressive throughout these championships there, quickly off his line. It's a good break again by Croatia, who've played with increasing confidence during these championships. Seer once more to the rescue for the Netherlands. The Dutch discipline throughout these championships, but they've been forced here to, to leave gaps in defence. They need to take the game to Croatia now. They're trying to raise the tempo at the start of the second half. Lessing on the ball at the moment, Langenhausen just ahead of him. He escaped from one challenge, but not the second one, which came in from Martic. Grichana. Or rather, it was uh, Tomacic who he was breaking forward and he's been fouled. Tomatec, very impressive in the first half. He scored the opening goal for Croatia. His skill on the ball was, was, was enjoyable to watch. And it's Croatia here with their skipper, Micho Marcic, on the ball and have the opportunity to, to come forward again. Tomatec. Rudovic trying to give him some support. And he's squeezed another in. Second for Tomatech, a fourth for Croatia. A goal which has been greeted with huge delight on the bench. Croatia getting better and better as the tournament progresses. And Nikola Tomatech getting better as this game progresses. A second goal for him. The Dutch in disarray at the back. Surely now they've got no chance of coming back. It's 4-1 now to Croatia. And an impressive showing. The Dutch haven't really played with any great purpose. They were sloppy early on and they've been punished now, again in the second half, by Croatia. It's not just the score on the board, but it's the body language out there, isn't it? The confidence is just falling right away from the Netherlands. We noticed it in the first game. And, and uh, by the same token, the confidence is rising Unbelievably, as we see Tomacic in all sorts of problems over the sideline there. He's the man who scored the second goal, his own, rather, his own second, the fourth for Croatia. Shot over the top there from Frankfurt. Yeah, and Sierra actually actually got a hand to that effort from Robert Gradovic. But worryingly for Croatia, Tomacic is, is still down and still receiving some attention. He looks very, very uncomfortable on the touchline. Martic, Gradovic. Neat play here from Croatia. Been very sensible. They've uh, had uh, Martic, the skipper, to, to give them a bit of spark from time to time. He's been very inventive, some of his ideas, Martic, particularly from set plays. Chulak has come on as a replacement here for Tomatec. You just saw Tomatic there and I agree entirely with what you were saying about Tomacic getting so good as the tournament goes on. As we mentioned in the first half, he missed the opening game and hadn't really made an impact until now, but my word, what a game he's having, and let's hope he'll be free to continue again soon. Good sign for the rest of the tournament with Tomacic getting some form, one of their key players. Here come the Netherlands, though, with Frankfurt. Now Langenhausen. Talak. Now it's Chad. On by Frankfurt. Now Martic. 
Radovich. Here's Eklich. Martic, good turn by Gradovic. Tala to the rescue, though, for the Netherlands. Tala, very confident in defence for the Netherlands throughout these championships. Vastly experienced player. Beloro is now on for the Netherlands. Tala is the player who's gone off. Chance now for Frankfurt. It's Frankfurt again to Chardon ahead of him. Beloro trying to inject a bit of urgency into the, the Dutch play. Dutch have been a disappointment in this game. One or two members of their squad were a bit disappointed yesterday having lost the opening game against Portugal. They felt that, that was the game which would decide who would make progress from this particular group. Now they are four goals to one behind against Croatia. And there's only 15 minutes to try and rescue it. They're showing no signs of coming back, really. It's Croatia, as I mentioned, full of confidence and just improving with every moment they spend out there on the pitch. It was a pretty good start to the tournament for the Croatians. The Netherlands with the possession, but I'm sure they'd rather swap the possession stat with the goal stat. Oh, Laura there was, uh, was caught. That's a foul to the Netherlands. Hefty challenge by Alan Del Pont. Laura now back on his feet, but he really slapped into the wooden surface when he when he fell there. Nice turn by Beloro. We got the foot and the ball there. Frankfurt. Molina. Beloro. Here comes Croatia again. Whoa, what a challenge that was. Well, that has to be a yellow card. Del Pont has been cautioned. Unnecessary caution then for Del Pont. Croatia already without their best player, Gradovic, for one more game in these championships. He's been cautioned in successive games. Now Del Pont is found his way into the referee's notebook. Villora, Frankfurt. Tijani, Frankfurt. Dutch with some of their fringe players out there at the moment. Frankfurt and Tijani. Oh, this is good. This is good from the Dutch, but they've surrendered possession, and now there's an opportunity for Croatia to try and break clear. in the, uh, the centre of the pitch there. That was a, surely an obstruction. It was uh, Topatec which uh, took, the, uh, took the knock, he collided with Tichard, went and punished two officials on the pitch in futsal. But there's a lot happening, difficult to, to pick up everything. Tala. Skipper Lea Tima just ahead of him. Here is Lea Tima. Talon would score. Tichan offering an angle to his left. Frankfurt to his right. Frankfurt has been very busy for the Dutch. It's on the ball again here. Dutch have to settle for the kick in from the sideline. Might have possession, but they're not really creating too many opportunities just yet. And Croatia, full of confidence, really looking the team more likely to score at the moment. Here's the chart. Now Tala, Frankfurt, Leatima. The chart trying to find some inspiration for the Dutch. Spry would be very disappointed with his Dutch side, I'm sure. 
Such good form after the first round. They top Group B with wins over Egypt, Uruguay, Thailand. And then it just seemed to fall away against Portugal. And it's got even worse from there today. Still with Spain to come. It is 96 all over again. There's Tala. Well done, Tala. And it was uh, to Chad who was stretching out there to, to try and divert the ball in. The Dutch have had their moments, but they haven't been particularly fluent or consistent in this game. Tower able to break forward and the Chardon just overstretching there as he, as he tried to steer the shot beyond Boudigan. Yellow card for the Chardon. Cut that out. Portions now. Del Pont, Rudovic, now to Chardon for the Dutch. Here come the Dutch again to Chardon. Umani trying to uh, angle the pass across the face of goal. Umani quickly across to take the corner. The team really decides to let the ball run all the way through to his goalkeeper, Tom Sear. One of the few occasions when the Dutch actually had numbers at the ball as they went forward. They've normally passed it around, and by the time they've taken the ball forward... Oh, that was a... Uh, well, the referee was right at the play there and indicated that uh, he was happy. And that's a penalty. Well... Suddenly, the Dutch have some hope. Langenhausen is sent tumbling by Brunigan. And Boudigan can't believe the decision. Well, we saw Grichar go spiraling quickly, spiraling to the ground. It's a yellow card for the goalkeeper Boudigan. He brought Langenhausen down. He didn't get the ball. And it's Langenhausen who scored from the penalty spot already. Who's now got the chance to get a second from the spot and to maybe just maybe give the Dutch some hope. He's blasted it out. Eleven minutes remain. The Dutch trail by two goals. And they live again. Langenhausen, the man, as he was in the first half. So that's two penalties put away by Langenhausen. They are still down by two goals, but that will give them some hope. Croatia four, Netherlands two. 29 minutes. Well, the Croatian players were, were most upset there. They felt that they uh, they should have been awarded a free kick when Breacher was uh, stopped in full flow. Tomatech there just skipping away from the challenge from the Dutch skipper, Leotima. Another free kick to the Netherlands. Langenhausen's third goal at these championships, two from the penalty spot in this game. Forward come... The Dutchman's ball with Mumani. Langenhausen, like so many of the front players, does a lot of good work with his back to goal. Just holding off the challenge, holding off the defender. Good play this by the Dutch. Leotima, Langenhausen, just managed to get a yard on Eklich. Real urgency about the Dutch team's play now. Mumani, now Tala, the Dutch with two of their most experienced players on now, Tala and Leotima, their skipper, who's age 34. Langenhausen just slipping there as he as he tried to make a, an angle for himself inside the D. Butigan has been cautioned. Four cautions in this game, three of them to Croatia, but it's Croatia who've got the chance to break forward here. Vital interception that by Mumani. It was Grudovic who wasn't far away with the follow-up shot. Grudovic, two goals here, two for Tomacic here. And this is the penalty which perhaps has given the Dutch a bit of hope. Thundered it straight at the goalkeeper. Budigan got a hand to it, but the power of the shot beat him. Molina, to Chardon ahead of him, inside the D. Now Tala. Good work.
Tyler just trying to drag defenders out of position. Molina to assess all the options. Oh, he's found to Jordan. Oh, that was an incisive move forward by the Dutch. Cleverly done. Great combination there between to Jordan and Molino. Croatia aware and alert to the danger. That was cleverly done too. Here's Talak. Dutch have another kick in. Clock ticks down. Promising signs though from the Dutch. It was so nicely done. The skipper, Martic to the rescue for Croatia. Perhaps we've written the Dutch obituary just a little too early, but still trailing by two goals. There's no doubt that that last goal has given them some hope, and they have lifted their game, their intensity, and it's Croatia on the defensive at the moment. Molino. Sia coming out, acting as the, the fifth attacker almost. Mumani. Molina. Chance for the skipper. Leotima. The Dutch now looking very workmanlike. They look as though they mean business. And, uh, understandably, though, the Croatians upset Eklic particularly that uh, he wasn't uh, awarded a free kick. You can see that his shirt was being held back. Nothing given. Game is allowed to flow. Could turn that back to Chad. Who has the kick in? The Dutch have the kick in. Molino has gone across to take it. Seconds ticking by. I wonder if we'll see a repeat of yesterday when Lea Tima, the skipper, ended up wearing a goalkeeper shirt but playing outfield. Ultimately, it was to prove very costly for the Dutch. They gambled on getting an equaliser. They ended up losing 3-1 against Portugal. But they've got to take the game to Croatia here. Croatia looking very solid. And an impressive performance by them, particularly from Grudovic and uh, Tomatec, the, the two goal scorers. Both have got two. Croatia lead by four goals to two. Mumani now on the ball for the Dutch. Here's to Chad. Mumani again. Leotina confronted by Eklic. To Chad. Mumani needs a bit more movement. Now Molino has made his way forward. The Dutch continuing to press the game into the Croatian half. Great save that by Burigan. Magnificent stop from Mumani. Struck it well enough. Goalkeeper was across quickly to make the save. It was a good, a good height this for the goalkeeper, but he had to get across. In fact, the shot was probably going wide, but he wasn't to know that. Croatians cleverly playing their way out of trouble. They've got players spare here, including the uh, skipper Martic. Martic! Still with Martic! He's got it! No, it's been disallowed. Indirect free kick. Well, Martic very, very unfortunate there. The boos are ringing round the stadium. Brilliant play by the Croatian skipper. Martic who's 36, confronted by Sear, just rolled the ball around Sear. And there, he was a judge to have held to Chardon. Now, that was a remarkable decision because I felt here that uh, he just bundled the way through. I don't know how the referee could come to that conclusion. He was very, very unlucky, I thought. There's no doubt that once the ball went in, the whistle had already gone. So there's no doubting that part of the decision. But whether the ball should have gone the way of the Netherlands or not, that is very debatable. One or two uh, ironic cheers here. Croatia now do have a free kick. But I can't understand why the referee awarded an indirect free kick in Holland's favour. Oh, stumping effort there from Gradovic, which thudded against the base of a post. Now, there's only six and a half minutes remaining. And I must say, when you mentioned about the possibility of Leotima taking over the goalkeeper's jersey, the same thought went through my mind. Perhaps at the moment, as they continue to attack, coach Nico Spry may feel that there are goals by more conventional means because it is a huge gamble, and it's one that I've yet to see in this oh, tournament. Oh, terrible up. throughout! Oh, traffic block there by Martic. Magnificent recovery there by Martic. 
saved the day, certainly saved his goalkeeper some embarrassment. Well, Boutigan's throw out there, it was launched straight at uh, Langenhausen. Wasn't an easy chance this for Langenhausen, but what a determined uh, interception that by Martic. And it's Martic to come forward again for Croatia here. They've got an extra man over. Sear it was who got in to try and make the block. Radovic with the, the shot over the top. And a disagreement here between the two officials. But the senior man has decided to call um, for a corner here to Croatia. And that's the official on the far side. Lovely Croatia are being led well at the moment by Martic. Martic was the man who saved that goal at the other end, and then he was the one who set up the attack through the middle. He's not a man of great pace, but great determination and ball control. Well, the atmosphere has uh, been boosted no end by the incidents we've had in the last couple of minutes. Passionate support in here at the moment for Croatia particularly and also the fact that uh, coming up soon we've got Spain against Portugal. It's good support in here for both those teams. Lots of Spaniards wearing the colours of their country and also Real Madrid and Barcelona, the big two. They're the big two in Spain and the big two in Group F at the moment are Spain and Portugal. They've both got three points each from one game. Croatia look to be on their way to their first success. Timeout has been called. Well, I wonder if during this timeout we'll see a change of tactics because we were speaking about the possibility of a switch with the goalkeeper, the extra man coming up the field while well, they're still now just over five minutes remaining and I started to say before that Nico Spray may have thought that there was a goal to be had by more conventional means because the Netherlands were doing a lot of attacking but they need to make up two goals now and this really is the crunch game it's the crucial game as far as the Netherlands are concerned they must win here at the moment they're persisting with Toxia in goal Croatia have also committed five fouls. Mumani on the ball. Leotima, Mumani once more. Letting has set out this second half. Mumani to get forward with Leotima. Langenhausen, powerful force in attack for the Dutch. It's Langenhausen on the ball. Did well there to find Mumani. That was a terrific effort from Mumani. He's already managed to produce one very good save from Boutigan. Then he was not too far away with a, a thumping effort. Nico Spry, the, the coach, on his feet on the touchline. Delighted with the effort of his team. And Leotima now has come off to pull on a green sweater. Leotima, the outfield skipper for the Netherlands. Less than five minutes to go. Final instructions for Leotima from his coach, Nico Spry. The Dutch are going to gamble. They've got to gamble here. The team who loses surely are on their way out of these championships. Tom Sear about to be replaced by Leotima. The Dutch can only make the substitution while they've got possession. They have possession here with Mumani. Now Tala, who will be asked to take on more responsibility at the back if Leotima is, is brought on as a goalkeeper. Mumani with a, a very sharp challenge there, which goes unpunished. Left his uh, foot on Radovic's ankle. Changes being made for the Netherlands. Sear is still there, but Eddie Letting, the man who can score goals, is out there. Frankfurt has also come on. Oh, great trickery there from Rudovic. Now the Dutch make that switch. Here comes Leotima. 
Maybe it's the last of the action that uh, Tom Sear, the goalkeeper, will see. The Dutch have brought on Lea Tima. There he is, playing inside the Croatian half. Pressure play now from the Dutch. Here is Lea Tima, wearing the goalkeeper's shirt and the skipper's armband. Outfield player, letting Now Marshall. Shot was wide from Letting, so now we have a switch of goalkeeper. Sierra has come back in goal. Quick thinking by Budigan, who tried to launch the ball quickly at field towards Bradovic. Another switch by the Dutch, here he comes again, Lea Tima. Marshall, Letting, Langenhausen ahead of him. Chance for Letting. Another opening for Frankfurt, he never got hold of his shot. Sear back on in goal for the Dutch once they surrender possession to Croatia. Just is ticking down, just over three minutes remain. This tactic raises the stakes for both sides. It's not only for the attacking side when they have more intensity in going forward, but you notice when they do have the ball, the other side are really keen to win it away because they know there's an open goal at the other end. So it's fascinating to watch, but as I mentioned, we've seen it a few times in this tournament and so far I'm yet to see the gamble pay off obviously it does on occasions but it is a rarity and the Dutch snatch anything from this game letting come the ball Lea Tima now letting letting again chance for Marshall Lea Tima. Well, that was poor by Langenhausen. Very tired pass. The timeout has now been called by Croatia. Less than two and a half minutes remain. Time for their coach, Marian Berncic, to come on and issue a few extra instructions. Croatia don't want to give anything away now. It's been a solid performance by them. I've been impressed particularly by Brodovic and Tomitec. Tomatech, who's, who's got two of the goals, as has Gradovic. It's a wonderful effort by Croatia when you think about it. The game is quite new in the country. It's, it's a small country, 4.8 million people. And yet here they are at the World Championships for the first time and competing at the very highest level. They lost to Russia, but Russia have proven themselves to be a very good side. In that opening match, it was nil all at half time and ended up being beaten 4 2. Went on to defeat Australia, Costa Rica, honourable loss to Spain. And here they are looking to be very well placed to take on Portugal and possibly advance to the semi finals in their first outing at the World Championship. Worrying though for Croatia is the fact that they've committed five fouls, one more, and they'll concede a penalty from the 10 metre mark. Marshall! Oh, he never got hold of the shot. He's blown his chance on more than one occasion, uh, Rennie Marshall, in these championships. He's, he's been given the responsibility when the Dutch have had 10-metre uh, penalties, and he's, he's missed three of those. And there he perhaps had too much time to think about the shot. Chad. Now Marshall, another switch of goalkeeper. Letting. Leatima. Marshall once more. Patient approach play here by the Dutch. It's uh, everybody forward now. Now, if they lose possession here, they're in big trouble. And they have lost possession. Got to be a goal. Oh, so unlucky at glitch. Well, what a let off that was for the Dutch. Quick thinking by Eklich, lofting the ball across from deep inside his own half. And another chance for Croatia. Oh, he's got to go off. He's got to be sent off. He's got to go. It was one of two options. He's not even waiting to see the red card. Lea Tima is sent off. The Dutch immediately take off Marshall and bring on Sear. Well, the gamble hasn't paid off. Desperate defending, and that of course means that Lea Tima will miss their final game, presumably. Straight red card. 
Well, that was, I'm sure, just something that it was a natural reaction to Laotima, and he realised as soon as he did it that, oh, no, I'm out of the area, well out of the area, I'm not allowed to do this. It was just a misjudgment. Sheer forgetfulness. Four on now for the Dutch. But Croatia denied a fifth goal and a third for Tomatech. Of course, a substitution can be made two minutes after a red card. There isn't enough time for that to happen here. The Dutch will have to play out time with, with just four players, unless, of course, Croatia score another goal. Croatia's first time at the World Championship. Oh, they're exposed at the back here, the Dutch. And he's walked the ball into the net. A deserved hat trick that for Nikola Tomatech. Superb finish for Croatia. They've grown in stature throughout this competition. And Tomatech Shear has been man of the match. Invaluable support from Grinovic. But that was a lovely finish. No more than he deserves the three goals. Was right in at the start in the move and he was there at the finish as well. It was Tomatech's layoff. And once he took the return pass from Grinovic, the Netherlands in complete disarray. And there's another chance, denied this time by Sheer. Goalkeeper did well there to try and smother the effort from Tomatech. It's fast and furious this game. Breathless finish for Croatia. Two seconds to go. The Croatians so emotional, so emotional. And that's it. A famous victory for Croatia. One of the new nations in world soccer. They caused a big surprise in the last World Cup, playing 11 aside. And now they're showing that they can compete with the best, playing five-a-side and playing futsal indoors. Time for the Dutch to go away and again reassess in much the same way as they did in 1996 when they had a disappointing tournament. A country which possesses so much flair, 63,000 players of football in the Netherlands. But it's Croatia who have proved to be the dominant force and now have a chance of making further progress. Croatia win, they get three points. It's finished Croatia 5, Netherlands 2. Wonderful performance and deserved celebrations for the Croatians. And it does set up a beautiful encounter against Portugal in their last round match at stake. Surely, this point of the season.